Okay, so uh, hi again. Thank you for uh, attending this uh, last presentation uh, of the day. So, uh, in case you were not in, at the previous presentations, I'm uh, Pierre Marie and I work at IDECO. And so, this presentation will be about a uh, small IDA library to read TOML files. So, what is TOML exactly? Let's first describe what it's not. <laughs> uh, so, um, it's, it's a it's a format, it's a text format to, uh, to record data, basically. Uh, it's generic, just like XML, JSON, and YAML, which I will uh, compare it to. So, in XML, uh, everybody knows XML. It's, uh, it's a format that is more or less easily uh, written and written by humans, more or less, because uh, if it's a bit verbose, and the most one of its defaults is that it's expensive to process. Uh, uh, it's a complex format, and uh, writing uh, an XML parser is a, is a big job. And uh, it's very hard to get it right, not only to write the parser, but then to write something that uses a parser because of the uh, format complexity, such as the namespace feature. Uh, validation is cumbersome because, basically, between tags, you have text and well, when it's spaces, it's fine, it's just indentation, but when you have extra text, is it valid or not? You have to, it's complicated to check uh, that uh, an XML document actually conforms to, uh, to some given format. Uh, there are tools to do that, but they are even more complex. So, so well, XML is something that is, is good for some purposes, but it has these defaults. So. Another known, widely known uh, format is JSON. Uh, JSON is actually very, uh, is also very easy to, uh, to read and, and, uh, and write for humans. It's very easy to pass for machines. Uh, there is a specification for that. But it has, again, some shortcomings, such as, uh, well, this document is invalid because you don't, you're not allowed to have a, a comma at this place. And if, you're, if you have uh, some experience writing this kind of document, you know that having this comma is handy because uh, you don't have, when you add a new entry, you don't have to add it there. Anyway, it's, it's handy. Uh, JSON does not allow uh, strict JSON because some implementations can be more uh, permissive. Uh, there's no provision to, uh, to write comments. I'm sure there are other, uh, other problems. So, and there are several known gotchas. So, you may know that uh, JSON comes from JavaScript, and in JavaScript you can't, the spec does not make a difference between integers and floats, so basically everything is a float. And in, so when you're writing numbers in JSON, you don't know what's the precision that, will, uh, that the implementation will use to represent your numbers, so you're not, you're not sure that your numbers will be preserved, basically. It's a big, uh, it's a big issue. Another widely known uh, format is YAML. So it looks like actually it's a superset of JSON. So every JSON document is a valid YAML document. Um, it's easy enough to write, but actually the format is very complex and adds a lot of subtleties. <coughs> so it's not very, um, depending on who you ask, it's not very, it's not a, a format that you can write uh, things in and be confident in how it will be interpreted from the first look. And yes, you have several annoying gotchas. Uh, you don't, strings are not, there's no need for quotes. So generally you write strings without quotes until uh, the string you want to write is some magic keywords so, such as uh, null, which will not be a string. It's gonna be interpreted as a null value. So it's not, not very nice. So after this quick tour of uh, readily known uh, uh, text formats and uh, their uh, defaults, their issues. Um, there is TOML, so it's a file format. You have uh, an example here. It's a file format that is, looks, like, looks a lot like any files, the old uh, format that we use, uh, mainly used on Windows and some uh, configuration, mainly in configuration files. So TOML is, uh, has been uh, created specifically for this use case. It's easy uh, to, uh, very easy to read, and I mean, it has obvious semantics. So uh, here you have a, a mapping. Uh, title is, a, is an entry that is, a, it has a value that is a string here. 
you have uh, f uh, first class uh, dates. Dates is uh, it's a native type to this uh, format. It's mainly oriented uh, as a mapping between keys that are strings and values that can be anything, uh, uh, other mappings, arrays, and uh, numbers, and so on. You have booleans. Anyway, the format has a, a specification. It's not formal, but it's very precise, and so it's uh, it's quite easy to know if uh, to, to read the spec and to actually know how to parse and uh, and, and uh, write documents. And yeah, so it has a lot of good uh, good properties that make it a good candidate to write to use Tamil as a file for your configuration, the, your software configuration, and sometimes just to record data. So that was for the uh, Tamil uh, language. I didn't uh, invent it. So uh, this is the canonical home from the for for the project. What I did, on the other hand, is uh, ah yes. Sorry. Uh, so I told you uh, it's used for uh, <coughs> configuration files. So in the real world, most of the uh, terminal uses I've, I could find were uh, package managers. So uh, the main one is, I think, uh, is uh, Cargo, the Rust package manager, and other package managers for uh, other language, uh, other languages also uses terminal. And as you uh, probably uh, saw earlier today, Alayer uses the uh, the terminal. Um, the thermal format as well. Um, yeah. And so, Ada Thermal, it's, uh, it's an Ada, uh, it's an Ada library. It's very, uh, very simple one to read, I mean, to parse and to, to, to create uh, thermal documents from, uh, from scratch. Um, so I've, I've written it actually for a layer because uh, we were looking for a file format that could be, uh, that would be, uh, uh, easy to uh, to write to read and write for uh, humans and machines for to describe packages um, so this library has two very simple jobs first take uh, uh, a stream or a stream of bytes and parse it and convert it to in memory data structures containers and uh, the other job is to uh, is to turn this in memory these containers back into uh, a thermal document. So there are two parts in the library uh, to fulfill these jobs. First, you have the, def the definition of the data structures, the containers, and subprograms to actually do the parsing and the dumps. Uh, and the project is on GitHub, so uh, if you want to have a look, this is the uh, project's home. So, and this is where... Ah, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, it's good, but... No big deal. So uh, the first part is the data structures, the containers. It's very simple. You have two types, so terminal value and any value type. So terminal value is what could be any value in a, in a terminal document. It could be a table, uh, a mapping between key and values. It could be an integer, a string, or any other data type allowed by the uh, terminal uh, format. And you have this uh, enumerated type that describes what's behind uh, a terminal value. So is it a, ta a, a table, an array, a string, a date, an integer, boolean? Could be anything. And you have this function kind that takes an existing value and returns what is behind this uh, this value. All right. So you have naturally functions to create values. So uh, if you want to create a, t a thermal value that is a boolean, you call the create boolean uh, function that. Uh, takes uh, the actual value you want to store inside a thermal document. You have the same for integer tables and so on, and also functions to uh, add an entry in a mapping, all sorts of operations you, want to, you would like to do with uh, uh, containers. So that was to create values, and you have the corresponding other operations to actually read the values behind the, the thermal document. So here the as boolean function takes a value, and assuming that this value holds a boolean, a thermal boolean, it returns the corresponding ADA boolean. Otherwise, uh, or it's a precondition, so otherwise you have a, an assertion error. Uh, yes, uh, it's, uh, I, I said earlier in the slides, it's an ADA 2012 uh, library, so 
uh, we, we, we can use preconditions there to actually be specific about what uh, are the requirements for each function. So it should be quite natural. natural well, the, this library does not do anything complex, so uh, it's supposed to be very easy to, uh, to use. Yes? Um, because um, that would yes uh, well it's a personal opinion but I, th I have the feeling that having multiple uh, constructors the only way as a human to understand which so you're talking about overloads having multiple functions Don't having the same, the same type anyway? sorry they do return the same type, but yeah, they. You can't overload them. I can because so they're part. Yes, yeah, okay. but when you have, yeah. the thing is that when you have, you, you, because of the shape of, of this. Uh, wait, let me. Yes. Yes. Well. Actually. That works for the atomic data types. That doesn't work for uh, arrays and tables because you, you have construct constructors that uh, just create empty containers. So for tables and arrays, that doesn't work. Indeed, we, it could work for, uh, for the, inter the atoms, so booleans, strings, integers, and dates, and so on. Uh, but so I have the feeling that if you do that, if you rely too much on overloading, the code ends up less readable because as a reader, you have to, I mean, if you have create integer and provide it directly an integer literal, it's quite obvious what it's doing. <laughs> but if you have, if actually instead of 42 here, you have other, other calls, other functions, other something, anything more complex, your brain has to work a little bit more, a bit, a little bit more to know what it's doing actually. You can name the parameter from integer arrow. But that's right. That, uh, and then you have to rely on actually uh, coding practices to uh, to make the thing the less uh, the, the more understandable possible. Yes. Anyway, so this is what the using the API looks like to build uh, to build values. So it's quite straightforward. Here we create an integer, a string, and then an empty table, and then we fill the table with the values that we just created before. And so if you're familiar with JSON. By when, when the execution reaches the command, you have uh, in T a document that is equivalent to this JSON document. And here you have a, a small example of what uh, converting tumble values back to a native ADA uh, values looks like. So that was it. With, with that, you can create tumble documents uh, programmatically without passing any, any tumble. But then, so, um, so yes, first, uh, still in the, in the TOML package, uh, the main package that defines container, containers and so on, you have two functions to actually convert, uh, convert a string to a TOML, uh, a TOML value and, uh, and the other way. So, well, it's, it's not directly returning a TOML value because uh, when there is a passing error, you want to actually return an error I, uh, I decided not to use an exception because uh, because of various practical uh, s considerations, such as uh, the ADA standard does not guarantee that uh, the message that you uh, associate to an exception will uh, be preserved. I mean, you don't have uh, any guarantees regarding the length. So for error messages, it's not it's not great. And also, ah, anyway. Also, uh, in the, the read results, also contains uh, the source location of the error. I mean, uh, I, it could be it could be in text, but I prefer to keep to uh, I prefer to keep it as numbers. Anyway, so that's quite straightforward to use. Uh, there is another package that actually allows you to uh, to do this the same, but instead of taking instead of dealing with TML documents strings in memory, it uh, goes uh, goes to the file system. And finally, if 
your toml document you don't want to read it uh, from memory or for, from a file for instance if you want to get it from the network or from a compressed uh, file well there is a, there are generic uh, sub programs that just abstract uh, the uh, stream of, uh, primitives to uh, to read or write the the toml file to and from uh, an abstract stream <coughs> and that's it so uh, Again, here is uh, the project home. So this, uh, this library is already available in Alaya. And, uh, fortunately, because Alaya requires it, so it would be a shame if, uh, <laughs> if it wasn't registered there. Uh, there is only one release. It's a very young project. And as far as I'm aware, the only serious use of this library is Alaya, the Alaya project. But still, uh, it's, uh, the first uh, release is, cons I mean, the API probably won't, mo won't move much, except if I rename constructors, but uh, <laughs> that's an another debate. And so uh, you're welcome to have a look, and uh, if you want, contribute. Thank you, and if you have questions, I will be... Uh... Um, just a remark, there is another benefit of turmoil that you didn't mention, is that you have no closing bracket. So, <laughs> now it's very important because if you want to accumulate results in a file, mm -hmm. you cannot do that in YAML because when you've closed the bracket, there is nothing you can do uh, after that. Uh, take a tool like <coughs> an example, a control, which, by the way, can output its, uh, can have its output in terminal format. Then you can run it several times and accumulate the result in the same file. Yes, the, the uh, text concat con uh, concatenation also works from content, a uh, valid document concaten concatenation. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And that's something you cannot do with YAML. Mm. Yes, that's right. Well, that works from the, uh, for, the, um, for the maps, actually. It depends. I mean, uh, it works for the top-level documents, for the top-level mapping. But you can actually can have nested. You have a syntax to uh, to create uh, nested uh, tables, but uh, well, that doesn't matter. Another thing I didn't mention about the, uh, this format is that it specified actually it's not a text format; it's a binary format in the sense that it specifies that all documents must be must use, must use UTF-8. So you don't have to worry about encodings when you use the, this library. More or less. Because when you provide it a string, it's assuming that it's a valid UTF-8 string. Other questions? Yes? Are you also the author of Knet called JSON, or did you just take some <laughs> inspirations from it? I took some inspiration from it. Actually, I'm uh, one of the maintain current maintainers of uh, Knet called JSON. Uh, yeah, I think the API, uh, some part of the API were, were easy to use. Yes, yes. I didn't. Yes, actually, the um, the part where when you pass, it doesn't raise an exception, but returns uh, a structured error, a uh, first class value error. It's the part I contributed to that called the JSON. So. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Germain. Thank you very much. So,